You create structures as an engineer. Yeah. Have you ever created a structure that you didn't design first? No, not really, no. Have you ever come across a structure that wasn't designed? From a man-made point of view, no. Right. Yeah, yeah. So why do you switch that logic off when you see structure in the universe? Okay. There is a there is a mis there is a reductionist fallacy that is being pushed on us by liberal Western society, which says that because we can explain the mechanics of a thing, we understand the why of a thing. American holiday. But as Christians, we can have Thanksgiving meals whenever we like. Whenever you have something to thank God for, you can have a Thanksgiving meal. JC, you're late. He's a Latino. He's a Latino. We love him. The man that single handedly pushed back against the Dawa team through his channel. This is what using your talents for the kingdom of God mean. And that's what each of you as a Christian should be doing. Take the talents God has given you and use them for the triumph of the church. If you're an accountant, be an accountant for the church. If you're a coordinator, an organizer, a logistician, be a logistician for the church. If you're a speaker, speak for the church. I know a Christian from my own fellowship who is a trained security guard. He does security work for the church. Every Christian, whatever your talent is, use it for the church. And if most of you are not sure what your talent is, think about what you're doing for a job or what you have done for a job. That is the best though not necessarily the correct way of identifying your talent. Any questions before I stop? I'm losing my voice and I need a drink. Are you a veteran? No, 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 no. I just love it. I've only just came here last week. I saw you over there for this week. Fantastic. Are you a follower of Christ? Unfortunately, no, not for you. But not yet. I'm, in, I'm an atheist in the middle, but I'm opposite the Islam. Yeah, that's why I came here. I like listening to what you're saying. Well, I, I would encourage you. To, uh, I would encourage you to. You. In terms of in terms of resisting Islamization, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? to resist Islamization, we, is, we have got to rediscover the thing that made the Western world what it is. Oh, absolutely, I agree with that. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. And what I'm saying is, you can't you can't own that only at a cultural level. If you just want to say, well, I'm a Christian, but I celebrate Christmas, but then your celebration of Christmas is absent of any Christian yeah, content. Yeah. I, I, and do you get what I'm saying? I, I do. I mean, I, I've grown up as an atheist, and I guess it's the more I've been reading about history of Islam and Christianity and things like that, I can understand why it he, he kept Western society together, how important it is. There's something I struggle with as an idea. I'm an engineer by training. But if I was to lean one way or another, certainly I can see how it gives us a better society. But yeah, I, I, just I, I, would, I would just point out that it didn't just help the Christian church resist Islamism. Yeah. But even when Christian territories were overtaken by Islam, like in Eastern Europe or in Egypt, yeah, yeah. it helped Christians to maintain an identity during those periods of occupation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I'm saying to you, as the demographic West collapses, as the atheistic, liberal, secular world dies, demographically, which it is doing, oh, yeah, yeah. And, he's, and, he's, and if trends continue, will be replaced by a majority Muslim society. Totally agree. Unless we have a strong Christian identity, we will not be able to survive the uh, pressure that comes from living within that Islamic world. So what I'm saying to people like you is that if you want to defend the West, you can't defend the West if you deny the root of the West. 
you've got to own the West from its leaves to its roots. Yeah, and that means yeah. you've got to own your Christian faith. Now, as an atheist uh, and an engineer, let me give you a good reason why you can believe in God. Yeah. Okay? As an engineer, are you um, a structural engineer? What kind of mining engineer. Mining engineer. Yeah, yeah. So, am I right in thinking that you will use mathematics in terms of the structures and pressures and forces? To a degree, yeah. yeah to a degree. Yeah. So, you understand that when you use maths, you're describing things that work by laws. Yeah. Right? Observable laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Predictable laws. Yeah. Now, would you agree with me that if something has predictability due to an observable law, this would imply design? Yeah, I can understand. I, I'm not sure. Like things like you know particle particle motion, you know dropping a rock, that wouldn't be by design. Well, that's gravitational yeah, force. Gravitational force, and, and that's sort of thing. And uh, like that, I, I struggle with that part of it. Like, and, you know, and I guess it's. Um, but, but what I'm saying, what, 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 to, to, to elaborate my argument more, we can use maths to describe the cosmos, yeah, and in fact we do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we use maths to describe the forces of nature and and the, the matter and so on. And mathematics is a language by which not only are we able to describe, but even to make predictions. And then those predictions can be verified through observable science. Now the fact that we seem to have tapped into a code, literally, because maths is also a code, the fact that we've tapped into a code that seems to be governing the cosmos, that then allows us to predict the next thing, which then through observational experiment we are then able to observe and test, indicates that this is designed. Because whenever you come across anything, whenever you have come across anything that is clearly designed, like a car, that, that you can't then describe through mathematics and describe in a predictable way, and how it behaves. Everything that we have ever designed as human beings has predictability because it is designed for a purpose and we are able to predict the result. Yeah? Well, why would we switch that logic off when we look at nature and we see observably that it is, is, it is, it is, there is a coding to the cosmos that we've tapped into that we are able to use to make predictions and then those predictions are coming true precisely because the maths works out. Yeah. That indicates structure and structure indicates design. You create structures as an engineer. Yeah. Have you ever created a structure that you didn't design first? No, not really, no. Have you ever come across a structure that wasn't designed? From a man-made point of view, no. Right. Yeah, yeah. So why do you switch that logic off when you see structure in the universe? It's, 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 I guess it's me struggling with the idea that there's a, a central, or there's a, there's a being of some description that, that controls that. Yeah. And I'll be questioned like, you know, if there is a God, I mean, what was before God? Yeah. And, you know, and I guess as science gets bigger, you know, things like evolution, think, you know, you're sure, sure we don't know how life started, but we can understand evolution from a place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, just so you know, I'm not against evolution. Yeah. No, and, and, but I guess that's where I come from. We haven't explained how life started, yeah. but that's just one step. Once you get that step, that all makes sense. Would you agree with me that we understand how the sun rises and sets? Well, because the earth yeah. rotates, yeah. Right, but I still see God in that. Okay. There is a there is a mis there is a reductionist fallacy that is being pushed on us by liberal Western society, which says that because we can explain the mechanics of a thing, we understand the why of a thing, and those are two different questions. You may be able to understand why the sun rises and sets. Yeah, yeah. yeah? But the beauty of the why, why are we here? Why, why yeah. is life but the, here? But the beauty of the sun rising and setting, which incidentally, for me, is a cosmological metaphor of the resurrection of Christ, because the sun rises from the dead and brings with him light and life to the world. And I think that that is a beautiful poetry in nature. But that kind of, that kind of, 
urging from deep within the spirit that when we see the beauty of nature around us, leaps out of ourselves, leaps out of the simple understanding of the mechanics to ask more profundous questions like why is speaking to the fact that within our human nature there is a desire to reach God and I think that in the reductionist modernity that we have we're encouraged to understand all we can about the mechanics and ignore the intuitive why of the soul and this yeah, yeah. is not working with our full humanity. Yeah, yeah. We should both understand the mechanics of nature and be able to appreciate the beauty of nature in a way that propels us forward. And the fallacy of the Enlightenment is it wants to ignore one aspect of our nature while endorsing another. Now all the early natural philosophers were not pursuing science for science's own sake. They were inspired by their Christian faith to understand the rational God because they believed he had a rational mind. So they assumed, and this is really imperative, because this explains why science took such deep roots in Europe as opposed to anywhere else. Bearing in mind that other civilizations were at different times more advanced than the Western world. But because of our Christian faith, we assumed a rational mind was behind the creation, and that meant that the creation had a rational order, which we could then explore rationally. And that was the impetus behind all the early natural philosophers, and why those philosophers went in to explore the rationality of the world. And it just so happens that their assumption was right. The world is ordered rationally that we can describe through a language of mathematics which is a rational language. And that implies if there is a rational language we can use to describe a rationally working universe, then that rationality implies a rational mind. Well, let, yeah, so it's a fair question, and I do like fair questions. I heckle people less if they ask me fair question. So in terms of, in, let, let's be clear about what time is. It's disputed as to what time is. Time, it's called the arrow of time, could simply be the observation of entropy, i.e. the movement of, of, uh, of things to a less ordered state. Or, or it, it could be a force. Einstein certainly believed that time and space were the same thing. So that over there was the same saying over then. Okay? So there's a dispute as to what time is. Is it just our anthropological observation of entropy? The, either way, the reality is that the thing that caused the universe to be the thing that caused us to be must be outside of time. And yes, of course, in a second. I just want to expose second, you how hypocrite second. you are. In a second, I'm just addressing okay, this man's I'm question. Here, I'm going to expose ignorant. you. This man is a true, true This is the Dao. This is the Dao. Don't be physical. This don't be physical. This is don't the touch me. I'm going to expose now, this, this, the this hypocrite eating. How they I'm going to expose him. How they be? And yet, I'm not being physical. I'm not physical. I'm just going to show this man. I'm going to expose him. He's a hypocrite. They complain when Christians do this to themselves, but here they are doing it to us. Excuse me. I'm answering his question. I'm here. I'm answering his question. No. Okay. I'm going to be here. Come to me. I'll expose you. Stand here with me. I'll expose you. You're a hypocrite. An idiot. And if you didn't come to me, then know everybody. He's a coward. So the thing that created. So the here. thing that and created these things must be outside of the continuation or the continuum of time and space and therefore is not created himself. And philosophically that stacks up. Because if everything had a, if all things that we know of in the cosmos had a particular beginning point in time and there's good sound reasons to believe that it did in the Big Bang which incidentally is described in the Bible, where uh, in Isaiah, God says, I am the Lord thy creator. I have created all things. By my power alone, I have stretched out the heavens. 
Okay, the heavens biblically is a reference to that which is above. Okay, so in terms of in terms of this continuum, the creator must be outside of that continuum and therefore not be subject to time, whatever time is, whether it's an equivalent with space or just an anthropological observation of anything. Um, I, 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 I don't think it's either. I think, I think, personally, personally, I think that both the anthropological and the Einstein understanding of time are reconcilable. I don't think they're contradictory. But either way, God is outside of it, and because God is outside of it, he's not subject to this continuum of who created the creator, and then who created that creator, and so on and so forth. Yeah? That's, that's where I struggle, but... Okay, sure. brother, have you got a Bible at home? I don't. I'm, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you a gospel. Yeah? I'm not going to ask you to read the whole Bible. Because the mistake is, when I say read the Bible, everyone starts at Genesis. <laughs> don't start at Genesis. Start at the Gospels. Yeah? So I'm going to give you the Gospel of John. Okay. I'm just going to ask you to read it. If you're going to come back to the park, write down your questions. And also, I'm come going back to Australia on Monday. But right. Well, you can contact us through. Is it info at socofilms.com? Yeah, that one is socofilms UK. Is it written on here? No. It, it, yeah, it's just our. Is it on the? Is it on the videos? Both, both email addresses. Which yeah. channel is this one? Yeah. So, have you got a pen? So it's Soco Films. That's the channel. And I think the email address is Soco. Oh no. Are you on Facebook? Films. Yeah, we are on Facebook. And what's your name? Bob. Bob, I'm That's not my real name, by the way. Okay. It's right. just the name I use to protect myself. I appreciate it. So, info Soco Films. But there's also an email address on the, the, the videos as well. Write down your questions, send them to me, and God willing, in time I'll reply. Alright, and I'll, right? look, I've enjoyed but, listening. But own your faith. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. It's your heritage, it's your yeah. inheritance. No, I, that's, it's been stolen yeah, from yeah, yeah. you. And remember, yeah, if there's anything that you don't agree with scientifically, the companions ask Jesus, why do you speak to us in parables? And it's because he felt that that was a better way of expressing a deeper message. Yeah. It's not always objective truth in the Bible. It's a yeah. deeper spiritual truth. Well, it's not, I think, more accurately to describe the same point. The Christian faith doesn't concern itself primarily with scientific truth. It concerns itself with that truth which brings us to heaven. As Galileo Galilei said, the Bible describes how one goes to heaven, not how the heavens go. All right, yeah. Yeah? And, and it, is, it is a misunderstanding to confuse these two realms of knowledge. Christians are not opposed to science if they understand their faith, yeah. because the Christian church gave birth to science. But some Christians set these two things in opposition, they're ignorant, yeah? yeah. Science doesn't contradict the faith. Some scientists set science in opposition to the faith, but they do so because they're ignorant as well. They don't understand the faith either. Yeah. Yeah. I'll leave that with you. I mean, you look after yourself. Certainly. Take care. Right. Certainly well. Get in touch if you can. Start talking to this gentleman. I'll come and talk to you. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come and talk to him in a moment. Maybe he goes. What, are you Christian yourself? Um, what's the interesting what story? I've, uh, I've been an atheist up until I began watching your vids, Bob. Really? I think you brought me to Christ. Oh, wow. That's a real honour. It's a real pleasure. Really? I never really, like, I was raised by atheists as well. So yeah. Pretty hardcore atheists. Yeah. So, um, so I didn't really understand uh, the fact that it was true, it was deeper than objective. It wasn't like necessarily that every word was factual. It's a deeper parable that's being told. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think I heard you say that. that and it's speaking to the inner man. You know? Well, I read the gospel. And it just connected. Yeah. Brilliant. And so, how long ago did this change happen? Really, that soon? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, brother, I would. I, I, are you living in London? Yeah. Okay. Do you want? Do you, can I take your number and then, you know, um, we can meet up and, and talk. And I feel if if I've played some part in bringing you to Christ, that I owe it to you to at least get you pointed in the right direction, do a bit of discipleship with you, and get you settled into a, a fellowship and a community. Jewish 
So just so you know, I always ring people on a withheld number. So that's what I will do with you. But I'll leave a message if you don't answer it and then you can call us back. So what's the number? 073. 073. Yeah, yeah, yeah.